know I've heard of this aquaponics thing, and I was thinking Epcot, Walt Disney, you see plants hanging down, and it's just it's a root-based system with no soil. You know, it's continuously fed in, into water. But actually, aquaponics involves fish. So, Jeremy, you have an aquaponics greenhouse, right? Yes. Tell us about that. About probably close to 30 fish right now. And um, they're, they're in about 300 gallons of water that gets pumped to grow beds that then have, you know, various things growing into them. I think right now we have, like, lettuce and turnips or lettuce and, uh, I can't, some basil and some other things. But and then in there is uh, also earthworms that break down the fish poop, and then it creates, you know, nutrients for the plants to uptake. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I thought uh, I thought it would be great to become self-sufficient a handful of years ago. And, you know, it, it is nice, you know, eating the things that you produce. They taste amazing. I haven't killed one of the fish yet, although I'm thinking about it pretty soon. But, um, you know, there's nothing better tasting than homegrown vegetation. It's just uh, I heard you and Chris has talked uh, last week about, you know, how possibly I might be thinking that I'm – have been scammed and uh I- i'm starting to i'm starting to i guess follow along with that conclusion that you know it's just it's too much it's just uh to try to to try to it's it's impossible to become self-sufficient in these days like it, it's impossible i'm 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 drawing a memory blank you're saying that i suggested that you're being scammed oh yeah yeah last week uh you and chris were talking and you said you brought up my name specifically you said Oh, Jeremy has an aquaponic system, and you know we've been talking about this, blah blah blah. And you know I think that he might be coming, uh, might be coming to the conclusion that he's been scammed or something. Oh, so, oh, okay. Right, that you, have, that you have to go back and forth to work all the time and do that. Yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. In your free time, and how much is how overwhelming that is. Yeah, yeah I remember that. It's hundred percent. Yeah, that's correct. That it, it is overwhelming, and you know. Um, I thought, I guess one of the ways I justified it at first was where I work, they promote that you should have, like, the simplest life possible, pretty much. You know, like, live a simple life. Like, you know, no, I mean, they don't come out and say no pets, but, they, you know, they that type of thing. And so I, I just felt like I was bucking the system type of a deal, and it's it's just, it's it's too much work. So and what's I, what's the hardest part? What's the What's the most amount of work with aquaponics? Well, it's not just the aquaponics. I'm I'm just talking about the whole farm thing in general. But the aquaponics. I mean, for for me at least, being in upstate New York, it's trying to keep up with the temperatures and you know just basically mimicking nature is the hard thing. Mm-hmm. Trying to um, keep the temperatures and humidity constant. So you don't have an you normal. don't have an automated system then. Um, I mean, it's somewhat automated. The the humid humidity controls broke last year um so that's not working but uh you know you it, be, being automated though once october and november comes around there's only so much I, there's only so much electricity i can throw at it before it just becomes ridiculous so for those who are new to this and i i am new to this i didn't have any idea that fish were involved in the system i, I think i've got like th- three quick points which explain and you tell me if it's wrong Three quick points which explain what aquaponics is really about. So basically you're taking fish that are in an aquarium, and if they're able to swim in their poop and pee, it's basically toxic. But when you take that toxic water and you pump it through a tube, and then you throw that into a tray of plants like herbs and lettuce and tomatoes, etc., that actually has beneficial bacteria and it kind of breaks down. And instead of it being toxic, it actually converts into like nitrates. And then that's absorbed into the food, the plants, much like fertilizer, much like when you go to a farm and they Nitrogen, spray right. yeah. they spray cow manure on everything. I mean everything. So that's kind of part two. And then the third part is there's some sort of uh, drainage system that uses whether it's uh, some kind of medium like charcoal or uh, sh- shale. Recycl- 
glass and um, clay medium. Uh huh. So this clay medium acts as a super filter, and a then buffer. A, a buffer, and then it takes that water which was once toxic, it cleans it, and then the final phase of this this closed loop system is that that uh, I'm just trying to figure this out. The so then that that water is now clean. And that's put back into the fish tank. Right. Yep. So I, I, you know, it's been a while since I read the technicalities, but yeah, it breaks down into like nitrites and nitrates. I believe it's the ammonia that does that, and then the plants can uptake one of the type that is then you know dangerous to the fish. And there, there being earthworms in there, that creates oxygen as well. Um, but yeah, it basically cleanses the water from. It, it's like an ecosystem, basically a closed loop ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And it uses uh, roughly about 5% of the water that a uh, typical farming would use? Yeah, there, there's very little loss due to, um, you know, it, it basically uh, condensating in my greenhouse. That's And then that's one of the problems I have is uh, the mold, basically. Uh, it's hard to... It's hard to... Uh, it's hard to evacuate the air while maintaining temperature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, I, I of course, I live in farm communities. I live next to Amish people, and I just took a trip from the health food store today, and I just saw one farm after another, and I was looking at the plants that were grown in the soil. And when you compare the plants that are grown in the soil compared to the plants that are grown the way you're doing it, it's really night and day. I mean, the, the, the plants out in the outside elements are, have tons of uh, bugs you know, attacking it, tons of weeds. They're using chemicals, and, and the food doesn't really look all that appetizing. Yet every time I see a video, and I all I did yesterday was go at one video after another. I've accumulated those videos, and you can get access to those videos if you go, once again, to truthin7minutes.com and click on the vault, show you how to get access to those. I took all the ones that I looked at. There were some that were hours long, and I took the best of the best, and I've got those. But when you compare the outside traditional gardening to what you're doing right now, it's really night and day. I mean, it's superior food, right? Well, I've, I've found that I definitely have to supplement with nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't think – I think basically – I think if I did a pure hydroponic system without the fish, I could produce better vegetables and fruits. That's interesting. Why do you think yeah. that? Uh, I, I have. I just – I have. Hmm. The fish, because with the fish you have to maintain that there's a balance between the pH that the fish like and the and the pH that the vegetables like. Mm -hmm. Whereas without the fish, you can bring the pH down to, you know, I think uh, hydroponically plants grow best at around like a 5.6 to 6.0 pH. Really? And, yeah, and the fish don't like that that much. And so I, I've grown much superior vegetables with uh, just hydroponic. I like. I mean, the fish is you know the fish thing is like a kind of like a cool wow factor thing. But I yeah I can't I can't grow nearly as good with the fish in there. That now, I can without so that. if you if you are hydroponics as opposed to aquaponics, where there's no fish, you would use a heck of a lot more water. Is that what you're saying? Um, yes, actually, you would you would usually uh, flush your do a full flush anywhere from you know a week to two weeks out every every week or every two weeks you do a full flush of your uh, water your reservoir water and nutrient solution as opposed to this uh, recirculating it mm -hmm. so d d do the fish actually provide that much in the way of nutrition to the plant or is that a gimmick I think they do they do provide nutrition whether or not I have all the correct bacteria able to break it down in this little mini ecosystem is another question. It just seems like something, I don't know, it, something's not quite perfect with it. Mm -hmm. There's something missing from a lot of the articles I've read. It's iron, but that doesn't seem to be it from the experiments I've done. Mm 